page, we got Chris Gilliman, Nick Greenfield with Orchestrate Distributed AI Agents with Azure Functions. Guys, you have the stage. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm a software architect on the Azure Serverless PaaS group. And uh, this is my colleague, Nick, a product manager in the same group. And uh, as was mentioned, we will be talking to you about orchestrating uh, distributed AI agents with Azure Functions. So before we get into the code and demos, I want to set a little bit of context uh, for when we're some things we're going to talk about. Uh, primarily, agents, multi-agent frameworks, and workflows, of which I'll sort of divide them into two different categories, one being sort of the self-directed agentic loop. And this is often the most uh, commonly seen if you look at the, like a lot of the open source agentic frameworks uh, that exist today. They're typically some sort of a loop where uh, you provide a prompt, the LLM decides what steps to take and uh, when to run them. And those steps may be some tools that you have registered or if it's a multi-agent framework, it's going to maybe call into some sub-agent to delegate a task. And uh, that loop sort of repeats over and over until you reach some terminal state. Uh, this is uh, especially great for creative tasks, uh, which don't have sort of a defined process. Uh, but uh, for repeated, repeatable business processes, sometimes it, it may not be so great because you're often sort of rolling the dice every time you run the agent logic. And uh, you don't know for sure exactly which path it's going to take or if it's going to complete at all. Uh, so the alternative to that is the deterministic agentic workflow uh, type of pattern for building agentic applications. And so in this case, the agents are still responsible for doing things like, uh, you know, the scoped intelligent tasks, uh, whether that's calling tools, uh, things like that. But you as the developer uh, get to decide which agents get invoked and when they get invoked, as well as what uh, contextual information that they have uh, visibility to. Because fundamentally what you're doing is you're writing code of some kind uh, to actually invoke those and pass in whatever inputs that you want to pass. It's not necessarily just the chat history that you're sending to your agent. Um, and so this is similar to real business processes that uh, involve humans, right? Um, like uh, document review or employee onboarding or, uh, you know, tier one customer support. And, you know, we estimate that, you know, amongst the full range of sort of uh, agentic workflow scenarios, that probably about 20% of them make sense for using the, the simple agentic loops where the agents uh, make the decisions on what they do. But probably 80% of the scenarios, again, this is just an estimate, but uh, you sort of need more of a deterministic agentic workflow. So naturally, you might ask the question, well, you know, what should I be using to, to build these agentic workflows? And for that, we propose uh, Azure Durable Functions as your agent orchestrator. So um, most agentic frameworks are still sort of in the experimental phase. Uh, they're, they're open source. It's a very new uh, sort of field, and we're still trying to figure out what exactly those need to look like. Uh, durable functions, on the other hand, is a general purpose uh, task orchestration framework. It is not uh, an agentic orchestration framework. And it's been around for seven years as a GA product and is really good at what it does, uh, which is orchestration. Um, now, when you write these uh, agent orchestrations using durable functions, you do so using normal imperative code. So we're talking if, else, uh, try, catch, while loops, the things that you as a developer are already used to. Uh, and this means that you get to author the logic using uh, the IDE of your choice, the language of your choice, uh, attaching breakpoints and sort of treating it as a normal application, which you don't normally get if you're dealing with a DSL or some declarative syntax where you don't have the ability to attach breakpoints and things like that. Um, and we support uh, you know, many popular languages, of course, uh, many of which I have here on the slide. Um, but and you know, we sort of talk about distributed uh, agentic workflows. Well, that's a built-in feature of uh, durable functions as well. Is you can run uh, thousands of these parallel agentic workflows across you know, hundreds of, of VMs and uh, we take care of the scale for you automatically. And then importantly, durable in the name, 
uh, you get resiliency built in. So let's say that you're running a whole fleet of these agentic workflows. Maybe some of them are long running, they're expensive, they're doing lots of token processing on LLMs. And then, you know, a, a VM crash happens. Uh, what you don't want to have happen is that you have to restart all of those in-flight uh, workflows over again, you know, rerunning all those expensive computations again, and then now you have to worry about your, your exceeding your quotas. With durable functions, what ends up happening is we restart those workflows automatically, uh, and we restart them from where they last left off so that you don't have to rerun previous steps that have already completed. Uh, so that's one of the benefits you get. And then of course, the uh, last thing I'll mention is cost savings as well. Uh, so because this is Azure Functions, this is a serverless platform. Uh, if your you know, agentic workflows aren't doing anything, maybe you're just waiting for some human to you provide some input, we could scale you down to zero. You're not paying anything for the compute. Um, and as I mentioned already, if something crashes and you need to restart things, the fact that you can restart where you left off means that you're not paying for computations that you already completed. So anyways, so that's enough talking for me for now. I'm gonna hand it over to Nick, who's gonna actually show an example. Thanks, Chris. All right, hi everyone. So today I'm gonna to be demoing a travel planning app that's built using durable functions, and it implements a deter deterministic agentic workflow that generates a personalized trip plan, and then it handles booking that trip. And this is all entirely based off some user input that I'll be sending as a, as a request. So this is the architecture of how this app works. Um, for each trip request, a durable function uh, orchestration is scheduled, and that's what I've highlighted around this blue box here. And the orchestration starts with three AI agent-driven steps to build the trip itinerary. And so each agent that we see here, we're using Azure AI Foundry agent. It's a specialized agent, and it's great at doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So in this case, I have the first agent call uh, picking the destination of this travel, this travel plan. The second, We'll pass the result of that destination to our next agent call, which will build out that entire trip itinerary. And then lastly, we'll pass that result to the local recommendations agent, which will add in some local recommendations and attractions. And so once that travel plan is generated, we use the durable functions human interaction, which is a stateful app pattern, um, to request approval of this orchestration, or in this case, to, uh, to book the trip. And then finally, once that approval is made, we, uh, we book the trip. And lastly, since we're using this new fully managed backend for durable functions called the Durable Task Scheduler, while these orchestrations are in flight, we can actually monitor the status of them. We can look at the calls to our, LL, to our agents and we can see the outputs from the agents and we can just track uh, that progress as, as it goes and it makes you know, the, the troubleshooting and visibility of these workflows um, very trivial. So that's the app, let's run it. Okay, so here's my front end, this is a static web app. This is the, uh, the information that I will provide based on the trip that I would want to take. So my name, looking for a family-friendly beach vacation somewhere tropical where I can relax after this eventful conference. Uh, five days, $5,000 budget, sometime in June, and I'm bringing my family, so we need some fun things for a toddler to do. And so at this point, uh, I've submitted this request and it's scheduling that orchestration, right? So here is the instance ID of our orchestration and while this runs, because you know, we're calling multiple agents, we're orchestrating these agents to work together to build out this trip plan, let's take a look at the code. Yeah, let's do some code. Yeah, so here's our run uh, travel planner orchestration. So this is the, uh, the orchestration that gets triggered for each one of these requests. And then the steps, which we call activity functions, are actually what is being executed as part of this orchestration. And so if we scroll down, the first call to our agent is as simple as this. It's context.callActivityAsync. And this is the get destination recommendation uh, activity function. And so, so Nick, when, you, when you're calling an activity, that activity is basically going and calling a, a, an agent and running an agent service. Is that, is that right, how that's it works? That's exactly right. So this activity is a function, and with that function, we're actually making, we're building the prompt based on that user input, which you can see here, and then we're making that request to the agent service. That result is then sent back and is the return output from this activity call. And as Chris mentioned, that's completely durable. So if, you know, if any transient failure, any outage, all of these uh, activity outputs are persisted. And so uh, it can pick up and resume from where it left off in the event of a failure without losing any of its progress, which can save costs. It can save, you know, uh, you might get a different result if you had to call the agents you know, for, uh, from the beginning again. And so 
that recommendation or that destination is saved into the output of this destination recommendations. We take the first result because we get three back. We take the first one based on a match score, and then we call our second agent. Again, it's as simple as just calling the activity by name, building that prompt, and sending it to that agent. And so that continues. And the last thing I want to show in the code as we jump back to the, the actual running demo is uh, that human interaction step. And we'll see this in just a second. But the, the idea is that we can actually wait for an external event. So at this point, the orchestration is paused. And it's waiting for an event of type approval. And it can run indefinitely. But I've given it a time span of seven days to wait up to seven days. right? And so uh, it needs to get this approval event within seven days, or else uh, an exception will be raised. And then you can handle it as you normally would. You can escalate. You know, you can you can do with what you wish. So hang on a second there, Nick. So you said it's going to wait for seven days. Am I if I'm running on like the flex consumption plan? Am I paying for like seven days of compute? Nope. It spins down, and you can spin back up when it gets that event. Cool. So I don't have to pay for that wait time. I'm just only paying for like when it's actually doing something active. That's exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that's the code. Let's take a look. Looks like we have our plan. Uh, so we have, looks like Hawaii. That sounds great to me. I'd love to go to Hawaii. Um, and I have the entire trip built out for me uh, for all five days that I'll be there, threw in some local recommendations, all within our budget of under $5,000. Do we want to accept this travel plan, right? And so this is that, again, this, this is that the orchestration's paused in the state and it's durable. Everything that we've created so far is persisted in the back end of durable functions. Okay, uh, and so yeah, let's book this trip. So, so you just clicked that button. Yep. And what, what happened when you clicked that button? So I sent an event, I raised an event to the orchestration, uh, the approval event, and I let it know you continue with the next activity call. In this case, book the trip. Got it. So that woke up that orchestration that was paused. Correct. And then it continued where it left off. Yep. Exactly right. Sweet. And so here we go. The orchestration has finished, and we have our uh, trip booked to, to Maui. Um, and as I mentioned, we're using the durable task scheduler, which is this fully managed backend for durable functions, which gives, which gives us not only great performance of these orchestrations, but also uh, great visibility into them. And so let's take a look at this dashboard that we get out of the box. And so here, what you can see is I have all of the orchestrations that I've run. Uh, clearly, I've practiced this demo quite a bit before today. Um, but you can see that this last one here was the one that we just uh, executed. And so I can actually drill into the instance details of this orchestration, and I can track the progress of each one of those steps that was made. And so I can actually look at the inputs that I sent to my agents. In this case, this was the first activity that was sent. It took in basically everything that I submitted to that form. And then I can see the output that was returned from my agent call, right? So this was that destination recommendation agent. We can look at the outputs for the next call, which we passed the destination to our build itinerary, and then we have that whole itinerary you know, fed back to us here. So this gives you that great visibility. A lot of this stuff is happening behind the scenes that I wouldn't normally see. But with this dashboard, I can track the progress and I can look at the outputs from each of these agents. So this is really cool. So this, this dashboard that you're looking at now, like is this a feature of the durable task scheduler specifically? Or is it, you know, do you get it when you use like the, the Azure storage backend for functions? Yeah, so uh, it's a good question. This, this dashboard is built into uh, the fully managed uh, service for a durable task scheduler. You're only getting this when you use that backend. Got it. OK, so that's a good reason to consider using the durable task scheduler then. Yep. So uh, that's the demo. I just wanted to emphasize, like, you know, this is uh, very much a deterministic result. Every time I run this, I'm building a trip itinerary, and I'm getting that trip booked. Um, and this, as you can see, it's clearly reliable, repeatable, uh, based on all the runs that I've run in the past. So. Yeah, it's a great example for using durable functions with, with deterministic agentic workflows. Awesome. Well, thanks, Nick. Yeah. That is an awesome demo. Let's switch back to the PowerPoint real quick. And uh, next slide. Yeah, let's just wrap this up. So, yeah, that's basically all we had for today. Uh, so, thank you guys for coming out. Um, just a quick demo. I hope this was informative. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, uh, definitely check out the blog post that's linked here. Uh, hopefully, you can read that, aka.ms agent-orchestration-with-durable. Uh, you'll be able to learn more about this particular demo. I think Nick is going to uh, post a link to the actual source code uh, later this afternoon. Uh, if you want to dive even deeper into some of the things that we're doing with Azure Functions, uh, check out the next session, which is in about 45 minutes. 
Um, the build secure AI agents with Azure functions. Gonna have some great information just on the sixth floor above here. Um, and if you have any other questions about just durable execution of the durable task scheduler, uh, feel free to reach out to us on email, a durable task scheduler at microsoft.com. We'd love to learn more about uh, what it is that you're trying to build and uh, get any feedback that you have for us. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.